My dearest Daisy, I am writing to you once again from the front. Every day we attempt to advance on the German troops, and every day we are met with harsh resistance. This sergeant has discovered a strange set of tunnels beneath our bunker. This may be our godsend. Perhaps we can use this for a proper sneak attack on the enemy, but I fear there is something sinister lurking in those tunnels. Some sort of monster. It's not often that we see a war story move into straight horror. War is its own kind of horror, of course, but in terms of media, it's rare for something to go from soldiers and shooting to monsters and jump scares. I'm a big fan of the 2018 film Overlord, but that's one of the very few examples that comes to mind. However, Amnesia the Bunker can be added to the list. The Amnesia series has been set across numerous time periods and locations, but this particular entry is something special. This time, we're in the middle of World War I, fighting for the French army at the German front. There was more than a decade between the original Amnesia The Dark Descent and The Bunker, but all the games in between shared the same careful walking, light shining, monster avoiding gameplay. This time, that monster is known as The Beast. Now, as you already know, because you saw the title and clicked on this video, I don't see the beast as the real monster of this game. Sure, your limited ammo barely has any effect on it, and you need to keep the generator running to keep the monster out of the light, but just because this thing can kill you doesn't mean it's the only danger, or even the primary threat for that matter. You might be thinking, oh, well, that's because the beast isn't just a monster, it's also a metaphor for guilt. That's a perfectly valid interpretation, too. After all, plenty of games have used suppressed guilt as the vehicle for some horrific stuff. That's Silent Hill 2's whole deal. Amnesia itself has focused on guilt too. In The Dark Descent, Daniel had forgotten about the folks he killed before the events of the game. But if it's not the beast itself, and it's not what the beast represents, then what is it? One word. War. War itself is the real monster here. Let's start at the bottom of the ladder, the most basic pawn in the war machine, the soldier. Our protagonist is Henri Clement, a soldat fighting for the French army along the German front. We get some brief flashes of this campaign at the beginning of the game. It helps set the tone, but it also plays into the series' main motif. These opening memories are quite muddied. Henri himself is an amnesiac, though we know he's guilty of something bad. We'll get to what he did later. There's speculation that he might have been conscripted into the army, or even given the choice between enlisting or serving a prison sentence. Criminal or not, we know he takes his pranks a little too far sometimes. Me? A scoundrel? <laughs> Perhaps. Now that you know a little bit about our hero, forget it. He's a soldier now, and when you're part of a military campaign, you're not a name, you're a number. Unique identity and individualism don't matter. I'm playing devil's advocate here, of course. I don't actually believe that. But it is the mentality of the war machine. And if it doesn't sit right with you, then my point is hitting home. You'll see this disposable mentality for yourself as you trot around the bunker, stepping over the bodies of soldiers you once fought beside. You can pick up their dog tags, and if you're lucky, they'll include a locker code on the back. They might be deceased, but their weapons and ammo are still good. But even this boon plays into the horrifying nature of war and the erasure of soldiers' identities. As you start collecting dog tags, you'll come across a note from the bunker's head clerk. If there's anything written on the tag, orders are to scrub it clean. Whatever special message this soldier literally held close to their chest is to be forgotten. It's harsh and it's impersonal, but let's pause for a moment. Are we, the players, any better? These bodies, these soldiers, were once people with full lives and families. But do we really care? At some point, we just want to know if they have a code or not. 
Thanks to the randomized nature of the code locations, the quick, almost thoughtless glance at each dog tag plays into this loss of identity and humanity. Scrubbing dog tags isn't the only order this unit was given. Prior to everything going to hell inside the bunker, they were told to dig deeper, to fortify their position even more. This led to the discovery of what the soldiers called the Roman Tunnels. It probably goes without saying, but if you ever stumble across creepy tunnels full of ancient statues and thick blue fog, you should probably just turn around and forget you saw anything. But that's not what the French army did. These strange tunnels weren't heeded as a warning, they were seen as an opportunity. French command ordered them to be explored further, in the hopes that they would lead beyond the German front and facilitate a sneak attack. Even after the men reported strange experiences inside, their orders stood. Your personal sanity doesn't matter. You're a part of this army, and we're going to win. That's the mentality. We were the world. The world we were. Of course, a human being can only take so much of this. Toussaint Beaufoy went mad and became lost in the tunnels, while another group of soldiers rebelled and tried to blow the whole thing shut with explosives. There's some logic in that, but logic doesn't matter in the face of official orders. Sergeant Reynard wanted to see the mutinous men thrown into a pit and forgotten about. It says a lot that the soldiers viewed the German front, the French high command, and whatever lurked in the Roman tunnels with the same level of fear. Look at this list again. Two out of the three items have nothing to do with the supernatural events inside the tunnels. Even in the midst of growing madness, these men knew that the war posed an equal, if not greater threat to their well-being. In the end, the commanding officers ended up abandoning the bunker and sealing it shut with their own explosion. Not just the tunnels, but the entire structure. Henri discovers this upon waking up and we realize that these uncaring officers didn't even bother to round everyone up before exiting. They have their orders to leave the bunker, and they will do as they are told. They leave behind burned bodies, unregistered dog tags, and even a few soldiers who are still alive. And why wouldn't they? After all, the survivors are just nameless numbers in the French ranks, to say nothing of the German POW that's also being held in the bunker. <laughs> If Sergeant Reynard was willing to torture his own men, just imagine what he did to the enemy. This is ultimately where the true horror takes us. War demands that men commit these extreme acts of violence. It doesn't matter who you were before the war. As we've said, you're a soldier now, and you will follow orders. Amnesia gives us a terrifying and tragic example of this. I said before that the Beast is not the true monster here, but we still have to talk about him. Yes him. This nasty creature was once Augustin Lambert, a good buddy of protagonist Henri. Prior to the war, Lambert was a family man. He even kept his son's stuffed rabbit with him during the war. We don't learn too much about the individual soldiers' personalities, but I'm confident in saying that Lambert was the nice guy of the group. So it's a shame he got so screwed. You see, Henri and Lambert had to decide who was going to go on a night patrol, so they rolled some dice. Henri cheated, sealing Lambert's fate. While patrolling, our buddy fell into a crater. Thankfully, Henri went out and brought him back, but he was struck by German artillery on the way. Lambert faithfully waited beside his sickbed for as long as he could, until the beast took over. As it turns out, that crater he fell into happened to be attached to the infamous Roman tunnels. Drinking the water there is what eventually transformed him into the beast we encounter throughout the game. Lambert might be the literal monster, but Henri is just as monstrous for cheating his friend into going out on patrol. Well, I laughed in those cases, and he'll laugh in this one. This is the cost of war. Even good and noble men are irreversibly changed. We don't know who our fellow soldiers were before the war, but we know that they lost all sense of individuality once they became part of it. We don't know our commanding officers' true feelings about their orders, but we know they have to follow their heartless commands no matter what. We've seen how this pattern turned Beaufoy into a muttering specter with a shotgun, but these dark changes are most apparent in Lambert. A simple patrol transformed a nice guy into a terrifying beast. War turns men 
into monsters. So, let's say you manage to blow your way out of the bunker, escape the beast one last time, and finally see the sunlight again. What then? Well, as I've said many times now, the true monster of Amnesia the Bunker is war itself. The actions that must be taken, the consequences of those orders, the resulting trauma to soldiers, all of this was happening before and during your time inside the bunker, and it's still happening when you get out. Our final moments before the credits roll aren't victorious at all. As we roll down a hill and away from the horrors of the bunker, we're met with the horrors of World War I yet again. The last thing we see is a German patrol coming toward us. Stein! Stein! It's far from a happy ending, but it's also not surprising. Amnesia foreshadows this endless cycle of war earlier in the game, when you climb up into the pillbox. Stare out the window for too long, and you'll end up getting shot. The only other time we see the outside is when we return to the crater, the same one where Lambert dropped his son's rabbit and drank that fateful water. This one little section of the map encompasses everything I want to say in this video. As you look up toward the edges of the crater, you can hear the ongoing sounds of war. Flying bullets, exploding artillery, the works. Your first thought is probably, wow, if they only knew the horror that was happening down here. I'm here to tell you it's the other way around. You have the hope of escaping this bunker, but you have no hope of escaping the war that's raging up there. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what Framework is doing, definitely hit that subscribe button in the middle. It would help me out an awful lot if you do. And if you want to see what we've already cooked up, you can hit that link on the far left. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.